Our next speaker is Noel, Noel Ferguson. Um, probably doesn't need a lot of introduction to most of you. Um, it's his fault that we're all here today. Um, and uh, he's put in a huge amount of work um, on, this, uh, on this summit. And um, I think many sleepless nights um, as well. So Noel, as probably none of you have guessed, is from New Zealand. Um, and uh, it takes a good Kiwi to, um, to show the Australians how uh, things are done. Is that what you said to me, Noel? Um, yeah, I know, exactly. All right. Uh, so um, he graduated from the University of Waikato, um, 20 years in the private sector, developing um, and exporting software, extensive experience in film and TV, um, and uh, particularly overseas, New Zealand, Australia, and Korea. Um, he was previously Communities and Technology Manager uh, for Midwest Development Commission in Geraldton and Western Australia, and he's currently the Economic Development Manager for Windsor Caribbean Shire Council. He's here to talk about a very fast network. Am I right there? Okay, Rob. Uh, first of all, thanks, thanks for everybody coming along, and thank you for all the community uh, groups that have been taking part um, in this whole process. Um, I'm really quite proud of my clever neighbours, so thank you very much. Um, and that was my council hat. Um, for this presentation, even though my name is there with the council, I'd like to take it off for a minute and talk about it from a, uh, a, a, an outside of council perspective. So anything I say here is not official council policy. Philip was mentioning my background includes technology and I've looked at it for, for many years from making money and losing money. Um, I'm still tracking it on a daily basis. And what I can tell you is that where we're heading now with uh, what we've got, um, which is heading towards the, um, uh, the whole idea of an NBN-based system um, is not necessarily going to do us a hell of a lot of good. Um, what I'm about to propose is that we, want, we need to look at leapfrogging the NBN scenario. Yes, it'll come, it'll be here probably this time next year, fully operational, and everybody will be going, ooh, an hour, and yeah, I can watch that movie, blah, 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 blah. But the fact is um, that it's probably not in terms of a, um, an international... Um, uh, scenario, whoops, I'm going to just get this right, uh, in, in an international standard, uh, going to be much chop as it comes out the gate, or, and certainly in five years it's probably going to be uh, overwhelmed as we go through numerous amounts of data while we watch our Netflix 24-7. So there is a strategic problem in terms of bandwidth coming down the line, and people have recognised this in the United States, and there are a few of them, you may have heard of the Google network and different other things. Uh, Chattanooga is a place which I heard they had choo-choos there when I was a kid, but um, it is one of the dirtiest cities in America, okay? The people there as a community have invested in high-speed broadband, which is 10 to 100 times faster than what we're calling fast in Australia. Now, these guys are getting enormous feedback in terms of positive feedback from entrepreneurs, and we've got people moving there for a quality of life experience because Chattanooga is also um, surrounded by a reasonable amount of wilderness, certainly not what we've got here. So if we look at high speed broadband or internet and we invest in our environmental and what we were talking about, Lewis talking about before with recreation, then you can expect to get the best of breed people wanting to move to this place for lifestyle reasons as well as professional reasons because they don't really have to be anywhere in the world. If we don't do this, we're just like everybody else. We haven't got a point of difference. If we don't do this, a lot of the things that you've heard about here in the room today are going to be harder. Not necessarily impossible, but certainly harder. And the innovation base that we're working from is going to be somewhat reduced in terms of, say, what we're talking about with the food side of things, being able to track which farmer made which carrot and track it right through to the sale so that I'm saying, well, where'd that carrot come from? Where'd that piece come from? Where'd... You should be able to look at that and see what it is. Now, people are doing that in New Zealand who are sharing their sheep, and when you get the jersey or the jumper or whatever it is, you know that Harriet created that for you. And here's a picture of Harriet. She is not a, a steak or a chop at that stage. Um, <laughs> it's not a good thing for marketing, but um, the idea being that you can track the product back to the source. And that is one of the key things, I think, that comes out from you know, the uh, fair food scenario and so forth, is the link between the buyer and the seller. And it's really quite important. It's very human. You can't duplicate it, but you can replicate it with the technology just by having an infrastructure that enables you to do that. So that's really what I'm on about. Okay? Um, the rest of it is probably um, 
you know, pretty obvious. Um, recapping, NBN, NBN operational in about 12 months, but we're in catch up mode anyway. What we're going to get is, we're going to get, and I'll show you a map shortly, some of our towns are going to get high speed 100 megabit uh, fibre. Well, hang on, I was getting high speed 100 megabit fibre in Korea in 2006, 10 years ago. All right? So don't tell me that this is fast. This is rear view mirror stuff, okay, in terms of technology. The next thing is that, okay, I mentioned before the 10 times current traffic, that's by 2018, and that stat was from 2014. Okay, so we're talking some serious bandwidth coming at us with Netflix. It's also already starting to creep in New Zealand. Sky TV, which is the equivalent, I think, of your do I, can't, I didn't even get it. One of your your uh, cable TV scenarios here in Australia, it's being completely screwed. Um, that Sky Sky's service TV service by the internet. Okay, so this is happening. Uh, by 2020, some of the people who've been in the game for a lot, bit lot more, about as long as I have, in one way or another, they're saying if you're not on the internet by 2020, you won't be anywhere. Okay. and we haven't got a competitive advantage with our technology, then we've got a real problem, no matter how good looking and smart we are in terms of our ideas and our projects. Now, we've got a thing going past us, and not, perhaps a lot of people don't know about it, a, a cable from a, a mob called NextGen. Now, NextGen are pretty much invisible to the general public. They don't go out and sell directly, but they've got the highest speed fibre going around this country, all over the country. Now, from my job in WA, which has included large networks, and, and figuring out how to make, you know, take cable into 600, 800 kilometres and give them something better than Sydney. Um, this mob are big and they own a lot of serious infrastructure and they go right past a lot of the villages. Okay, and I'll show you the map shortly. So that's a major advantage. Mosvale Economic Zone, okay. If we want to get that place filled up, we're going to have to have more than the NBN. I mean, we've got people I know there who had really good uh, internet at one stage. They closed down their call centre, which may not have been big, but they closed it down because a spade, somebody put a shovel through a cable and it never got fixed up properly. So they couldn't do the call centre from that location. Okay. Now, putting something in here, if we have a, a, a connection to high-speed fibre going to a pole, which is broadcasting high-speed broadband, I mean, I'm talking one gigabit, gigabit um, wireless, into that, we're flooding it. That's a very small cost, okay, and it's facing, you're the economic zone, I'm facing you. That's all set, ready to go. But the same pole can point that way too. And that starts med uh, lighting up Mossvale cent Central. Just one pole and one connection does that. Now there's issues about redundancy, which means you've got to have two points of entry, otherwise you've got a single point of failure and a whole bunch of other technical stuff. But basically it's that simple, okay? Local suppliers, we've got some smart people here, uh, as you know. So we've got local suppliers who can complete that network nicely. We've got strategic locations available. The council owns land on the top of Gibraltar. Now there's a bit of a to-do about that at the moment perhaps, but that is a strategic point and that has to stay local. And it has to stay local because if it stays local, then we've got our unfair advantages listed above. We're controlling them, nobody else. And I'm telling you from bitter experience that unless we control our technology base, we're dog tucker, long term, because people can come and go. What does it look like? Well, there's a quick and dirty map. Um, just to give you the green bits that you can see, hopefully, brown bits, that's sort of those red lines. That's the guts of NBN here in the region. Now, it will cover, excuse me, will cover off more areas than that. But basically, as soon as you get out of the fixed wireless, which means a wireless point to your home, which you you may, yeah, you'll be able to use Skype on it, you know, make VoIP calls and stuff. But as soon as you move away from that, you can't use it. Or if you're out of that zone, which can pick up that fast wireless, 25 megabit, which is a quarter, this is a, on a good day, um, you're going to be faced with satellite. Now, satellite, we just spent something like $600 million on it. We may need another satellite, another 300. So it's a billion dollars on satellites. Now, that's fine, but um, if you've watched a lot of sport, like rugby, uh, you'll know that the, the guy at the other end is sitting there going, and he hears, and it takes about half a second to a second for him to hear that. That gap is called latency, okay? So you can imagine having a Skype call using that, okay? How can you manage your relationships with your clients use, with that kind of latency, okay? If your punter down the road in Sydney even if he's using NBN, he's going to be way faster than what you're getting. So basically, having satellite, in, and this is what I learned in, in WA, the implications of it, locks you into a, a very ponderous way of doing business. And 
given that we're looking at food, given that we're looking at managing our environment and a whole bunch of other things, satellite is not a long-term solution. Okay? So yes, it's better than nothing, and it's probably great for the fires and all the rest of it, well, unless you get too much smoke and then they can't see it anyway, but point being, we've got to get beyond satellite and we've got a way of doing that. Ah, uh, the red lines are, okay, sorry, just to, this the bit up the top here, the middle, that's Gibraltar. So you can see how strategic it is, okay? And what you've got is, you've got a, what, you know, what's called a point-to-point -point connection via those red lines to another wireless device over here, which is then illuminating that area around that dull brown with the, the, the three dots down by Robertson there. That is where the area is going to be covered perhaps, but you can't tell until you do it. It is a, I mean, it's fair cop, it's hard work to figure out where this is all gonna work because you just don't know until you try it. So that sort of area there. But at the same time, we've got the fastest fibre, as fast a fibre as you'll get anywhere in the world going right past the doorstep, and one aerial, which I have got yet to figure the costs out, um, could light up all that area with, at 10 times the speed. The, the blue lines uh, are the next-gen network. Okay? So you're talking telecommuting anywhere in the world. Yeah, those, this big, the two of them. And in fact, there is a connection, of, it's as rough as because they haven't given me the detail detail yet, but I'm, I'm on the case for it. This is quite important because this is a junction point in a major network and there is a possibility, if, and I said, well, why don't you put a data centre here in the Southern Highlands? And they laughed, but there may be a case for one and I haven't explored that yet, but that's a significant opportunity as well. Okay, so we start off with the, the, the Mossvale CBD. That gives us, I say again, the Mossvale Economic Zone. That gives us crowing rights, okay? The land value goes up or we lease it or whatever, we better do this before we get the solar in because otherwise it might not work out that way. But, um, but there you've got people who are saying, well, there's one less reason to not move there. You know, it's easier for them to say yes if we've got something there. If we haven't got it here, they're going to say, well, it's just another country town with a bit of land. Well, woohoo, this is Australia. There's plenty of places with a bit of land, right? So we need a competitive advantage, and that is it. If everybody else is at 100, at 100 megabit, and we're, say again, 100 megabit, and we're at one gigabit minimum, then we've got it. We can clean up, especially on an intense, an energy, uh, say again, an information intensive industry. Okay, and because it goes both ways, we can light up the CBD of Mossvale, which also goes straight into the canvas, which has good feeds internally at the moment. But there's a whole bunch of pluses with that. The next one is obviously the other CBDs because if, we, if that kicks off there, then those are going to be where, where we're going to get the talent that's who want to live here and have, enjoy the lifestyle and get right into the speed and, 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 and the talent that's required at Barrel and at Mittagong. Okay. Then we use the one gigabit, the one gigabit wireless backhaul okay, to replace the satellite services because that's where the major growth, I believe, in this region is going to take place is in the food side of things. Okay. We're talking numbers of jobs thousands of jobs, not just a 10 or 20, but thousands. And those people are going to keep our children and our grandchildren alive. Okay? The next stage after that, okay, we've got all, then we've got to go backfill. Okay? Think of paint by numbers. Number three is we've got the black lines on the page. We know where everything is and we're covering off as much as we can, as easily as we can. We've still got to do the backfill. We've got to put the colour into it. And that with technology we have locally, and we can probably, based on what I'm seeing of the technology being developed here in uh, Barrel, um, well, it's actually in Mittagong, but the offices in Barrel, be able to get, get a serious uh, bit of industry going there, which can extend the NBN further and other places, just the NBN, because it's independent of what we're talking about. It can be worked with the NBN, so there's a, a, an industry fill there. And then finally, because we end up with coverage right across the area, in the areas which aren't covered off you know, at the moment at all and we're only satellite, we've got the opportunity to start monitoring the agricultural side of things, doing that uh, supply chain tracking that I was talking about before. We've got the opportunity to track and monitor the environmental side of things. The environmental is incredibly important, think water and all the rest of it. And the Internet of Things, which is the next big thing, uh, that's where we can go with this. If we stay with what we're going to get, basically we're not really going to have anything useful. So that's, oops, sorry, there's one last one. Uh, and then backfilling NBN because by then the people who bought into NBN will say, hang on, he's 10 times faster and he's probably um, half the price. Um, I think I want to go on that one now. So there's be an opportunity further down, but, you know, but I'm not saying replace that for everybody straight away. I'm saying you replace it once you've done every, everything else. Final, sh this sort of stuff, ownership and pricing, TBA, okay? But community-owned stuff 
can align better with our objectives as a community. And quite frankly, a lot of the things that have been talked about here today align with the 2031 objectives. If, you don't, if you're not familiar with that plan, please go and have a look at it. End user pricing, stuff I've looked at before. Um, and these are small places in the middle of nowhere. It, the numbers are different, but it's just an idea. The sort of cost is likely for the end user to be in the order of about half the price of a commercial. It may be 80% of the price, okay? But that depends on how fast you want your payback. Um, and the payback I've been um, looking at is, you know, just on a straight commercial, three to four years for play, this is in WA, which is again completely different, so it's not, don't swallow it whole, is in the order of um, four, three to four years um, and for communities of a thousand people or less. Okay? So you can do this quite well in ownership, but we've got to get the ownership. Technical feasibility's got to be done for those first five priority areas, network modelling, these are all the geek things that you've got to do before you, well, the sorts of things, not exactly everything. Then you've got to find out what people actually want to do with it. And they've got to understand what they can do with this. Now, that takes 6 to 12 to 18 months, so that needs to be running in parallel, um, the training. And then we st we've got all that going, even if it's the first one, okay? As soon as we've got something going, we start kicking out the PR about the fact that, hey, we've got one gigabit, how big is yours? And off you go. Okay, and people have got a reason to say one gigabit, one gigabit, and you you'll be amazed. You think of all the gamers who would love to play at that speed, but anyway, um, the pizza guys are making a fortune here. Um, so, <laughs> so you've got all of that stuff working, and that's it. And we're looking really that's the next stage: seed funding for a business plan, which at the moment is not on my budget, unfortunately. But um, there you go. So that's the basic big plan. There's lots of other things we can do, but that's quick and thumbnail and overview for what's possible. Thank you. Thank you, Noel. I know that was a hell of a lot to get through in a very, very short period of time.